So I don't, I'm not sure um, how to fix that, but uh, it might just be your inter con internet connection, and maybe you want to close everything else down uh, on your computer so you can give this the most speed. True. But he okay. has the microphone so, very, very far from his mouth. True, but I mean, like, look at me. I have no microphone near me, and my computer is picking it up. So I, it just it just depends uh, on the type of computer, the type of microphone, also the interconnect internet connection. There's so many possibilities and variables, so uh, it's all different. Yeah. Uh, some English. How are you today? Oh, uh, hello, Ian. I'm fine. About good. And how yeah? about you? Uh, I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Uh -oh. So. Yeah, yeah, I just woke up, so nothing to complain about yet. Yet. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Shin Yu, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Good, good. Uh, are you calling from China? I'm from China. What, what city in China? I live in Sichuan province. Sichuan. Of okay, Sichuan province. It's probably cold up there, right? It's Is not it cold? cold. It's not cold. Okay. All right. I'm wrong. All right. Well, I'm glad you are warm. And Cecilia, how are you today? I'm fine, thank you. I'm very well. I'm fortunately, fortunate. Okay. I'm struggling with my studies, but I break up to come to your class. And to see you and send you hot weather, hot waves, hot waves. I'll, I'll take it all. I'll take it all. Thank you. And, uh, and Hasim, how are you today? To, to introduce yeah, fine, you thanks. to Daniel. Ah, thank you. Thank you for introducing me to uh, Daniel. But I uh, already know him. Ah, sorry, yes, sorry, but, Daniel. <laughs> yes. Uh, and Hasim, how are you today? Uh, I'm fine, thanks. Uh, right. how, how are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. Uh, so let's start this day, uh, this class. It's uh, My name is Ben. I'll be your teacher. This is Intermediate English slash Advanced English. Uh, no, actually, I'm sorry. This is Advanced, this class. Uh, and we are going to talk about how to uh, write a summary uh, based on readings uh, or even movies or whatever. Um, so first, before uh, we get into this, we have to know what an, a summary actually is. So you have, let's say, a paper uh, that you need to write, and they want you to summarize a book, or they want you to summarize an essay, or, 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 or maybe even a biography of someone famous. And the teacher wants you to write a summary. Okay, well... In America, it might be different than what you have to do in, uh, in the country that you live in. But needless to say, a summary is a, um, a long text that is distilled to its essentials. So what that means is the key points worth noting, okay, plus a few examples and a few details are what this is what makes up the su uh, summary, okay? Um, but the specific form, the sentence structure, the vocabulary, uh, all of those change, but the main ideas remain. So you have liberty because now this is in your own voice, okay? That's what the summary is. It's now your own voice summarizing, telling us, uh, telling, um, telling us what you got out of the story or the biography that you read. So it's in your own words. And that is very key, okay, when writing the summary because they are, it is your own words. And you have to be careful with uh, two things that you might not have to uh, think about in the country that you live in. One, you have to be careful of copyrights and you have to be uh, careful of plagiarism, okay? So uh, what is plagiarism? Uh, plagiarism. Uh, can be intentional and it can actually be unintentional. Uh, you, as a student, actually. Uh, yes, I'm sorry. I have a I, I can't understand you. Will you repeat your uh, question, please? In your 
when when you can speak some sentence or new word, I can't understand. Well, I apologize. I can slow down, uh, but maybe this class is not for you, only because this is advanced, and so I I figured you guys have uh, a good grasp of the English language. I can slow down a little bit, okay? But uh, these words um, are big, uh, and so I, I need you to already understand most of what I am saying. Yes, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so plagiarism. And uh, if you want to see where I am, I do have a document in, um, in Google Drive. It's called Summaries. Uh, plagiarism is rampant. It is a huge problem in uh, America as well as the rest of the world. Basically, when you are summarizing, you are putting um, text into your own words. So you are saying, here is the main idea of the short story. Here is the main idea of this um, book or movie that I watched or read. Plagiarism is where you take the words directly from that book, you take the, the words, and then you make them your own. That is plagiarism, okay? And that is one of the worst things you can do when writing an essay to university uh, because they can easily catch you uh, and they try to catch you, uh, and then they will give you a zero, not only on your paper, but sometimes they will kick you out of class and sometimes they will kick you out of school. So you have to be very, very careful with plagiarism. Okay, It's very important in America because we have something called, uh, uh, what's that word? Um, it's, 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 it's a concept where... Copyright. Which, copyright. Yeah, copyright. Hey. Copyright. Copyright. Thank you. Thank you. Where whatever you produce, whatever you make, that is your own. And you have the right to make money off of it. And if other people use it and say it is theirs, then they can make money off of it and you are losing money. So uh, in America, it's, big, it's a big deal. It's big business. Thank you so much. Uh, and so you have to be careful with that because even if you are doing it unintentionally, uh, you can get expelled from school, you can, uh, you can get on probation, you can get expelled, you can, you can get an F uh, on your grade or whatever. And it's very easy for them to catch you. They can literally take a sentence and just put it quotes on it in Google and find out where it came from. So I don't know if you've ever done that, but if you go into Google and you put quotation marks around a sentence, it will go directly to where the source is. But also universities also have um, sophisticated software to scan documents to know if you are uh, plagiarizing. So basically all I'm trying to say is don't plagiarize uh, and put this in your own words, okay? Now, how to summarize, okay? How to summarize. Now, uh, there's different ways to summarize, and we're going to go over some, but uh, if you use the FACT acronym to do summary writing, this should help you out. Number one, F, focus on the main idea. What is the main idea of the story? Put that in your own words. What happened? Okay, now just put it in your own words. A, Analyze by describing the main pieces of the story. Okay, so you're going to analyze the main pieces of the story. C. Conclude by telling us how the story ends. Okay, so conclude, wrap everything up, wrap up your summary. And then T. Tighten your writing by editing grammar errors, deleting extra words, and creating paragraph unity. So it's very similar to writing a paragraph essay, so to speak, um, where you are going to edit it, you're going to delete extraneous details, uh, and you're going to make sure your paragraphs flow uh, together, that they are unified. Um, also, what you want to do is um, you want to, okay, when you read a book, a book will give you so much extra information because they want to set up the scene. They will tell you, tell you how, how, uh, how the wind was blowing in the person's hair that day and how the 
hair on was shining color and the sprite and the birds were chirping and the dog was barking it will give you all this extra information to give you the emotion of the scene that's the stuff you don't need what you need is like what this person did why they did it where they did it what happened that's the that's the main idea of the story okay let me show you some examples now again, please, if you have not done it already, in the Google app, okay? And I see five of you are already there. Okay, now, summarizing is very similar, if not the same, as paraphrasing, okay? Uh, and to paraphrase is you're taking words, or you're taking a sentence, right? If I say, um, I love to eat all foods except pizza, Okay, now you are going to take that information and you are basically basically going to say the same thing, but you're going to put it in a different order, so to speak. Um, and you could say Ben Ben only or Ben doesn't like pizza, but he likes everything else. I basically took the original sentence of what I said and I just switched it. I just I just turned it over upon itself. And I put it in a different order, and but it still maintains the original meaning and the original idea. That is what paraphrasing is, and paraphrasing is very uh, helpful when you are summarizing. Okay, so take a look at this dialogue between teachers and students. Okay, here is a sentence that the teacher gives: "The elephant is the only animal that cannot jump with all of its legs off the ground." Now, we have to decide what is the main idea of the sentence. The students answered. Elephants can't, main idea, okay? Elephants cannot jump. That's the main idea of that sentence. Okay, so the teacher's like, good. Now, what words can we not replace in this sentence? Words that we have to leave in there, okay? Now, so elephant, since we're talking about elephants, elephant we cannot change, right? We could say it's the largest mammal, but that's actually unnecessary, and those are just extra words that we don't need. So we can keep elephant, okay, but we can, we can paraphrase what the elephant can or cannot do, okay? Because what about the word jump? Can we replace the word jump with a different word? Yes, yes we can. We can say leap. Okay, leap or get the feet off the ground. Okay, what about off the ground? And then the students are like, yes, we could say in the air. Okay, now what about only animal? Because it, in the beginning, the sentence says the elephant is the only animal that cannot jump. Okay, and then students are like, well, let's talk about other animals. Okay, good. So now they erase the sentence and now they come up with something new. Okay, and it's a paraphrase. Most animals can leap in the air except for the elephant. Now, they took the original sentence and they decided what was the main idea. Then they decided what were some key words that could not be replaced. Everything else that could be replaced, they did. Then they switched it on its head and they they took and they paraphrased that first sentence to this. Most animals can leap in the air except for the elephant. You see how it's basically the same sentence except for now it's in your own words and you're not plagiarizing the sentence from the story, from the book, or whatever. Okay? Are there any questions so far? No? Okay. All right, let us let me continue. All right. Do you guys know the nursery rhyme Humpty Dumpty? Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall. Yes, that nursery rhyme exactly. Okay? All right. Humpty Dumpty okay. had a great fall Humpty Dumpty. Yeah, all and the all the king's horses and all the king's men could not put Humpty Humpty um, back together again. Again, yeah. Okay? I have it written down. It's a very short rhyme. And it's... Ooh, hold on one second. It's, it's just down below in my summaries. Okay? Here is the original text. I will put it in Google Drive. 
or the uh, the chat. Okay, so this is a nursery rhyme. Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty back together again. That is a nursery rhyme. Now, let's say we want to summarize the main idea. Okay, and they did it for us, so we can just look. So, here are two different ways people have summarized or paraphrased the main idea. The first one says, While sitting on a wall one day, an egg had an accident, which resulted in tragedy because no one in the kingdom could repair him. There is the main idea. They did not use the name Humpty Dumpty. Now you could, okay, but they said exactly what was happening, okay? An egg was sitting on a wall, okay? He fell down and had an accident, and it was a tragedy because no one in the entire kingdom could help or repair him. That is now paraphrased in your own words. Okay, and that's what people are looking for when you are writing summaries. They do not want you to just take text and copy it and then paste it as your own. You will get in trouble for that. What they want is for you to put it in your own words, keep the main ideas, okay, but put it in your own words. It's, it's very simple, but it takes lots of practice, okay? Here is one more paraphrase, okay? of the same um, nursery rhyme. Well, he's sitting on a wall one day. Okay. He had an accident which resulted to tragedy because no one in the kingdom could prepare him. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> the kingdom mourned the loss of Humpty because he was broken beyond repair when he fell from the wall. Now, like uh, it is okay to keep the names of the main characters. That's okay. Okay, you can always keep the the names of the characters. That's important. Uh, that is something you cannot change. Okay, so you can keep that. If you're writing a story about Martin Luther King, you can you can talk about Martin Luther King. Okay, uh, but maybe instead of saying he was assassinated on this day. Just say he was fatally shot and wounded uh, on this day. And so, uh, yes, uh, Daniel, uh, Humpty Dumpty is a name. Uh, it's the name of the egg. Um, yes, yes, it is. So now what I'm going to do is I have two things I want us to summarize. One is a three-page short story. That should take us about five to ten minutes to read. Okay. Then after we do that, we're going to try to summarize the main idea. Okay. And now remember, what's the the best way to summarize is to just write what's what's the main idea, what's going on in the story. Act like you are going to tell the friend what the story was about. You're not going to tell them every single detail. No. You are just going to tell the main ideas. So the person that you are telling can get the big idea, the main picture, okay? And that's what you want to do. So you write down, right, the main ideas, and that's your outline. And now you just put it in order, and you make it sound connected. You make it sound... Say again? All right. So now I've showed you how to do it. So now let's try our best so I'm going to um, I'm going to take the screen from you guys this is called the little match seller it's a good story but it's also sad Okay, can you see the text? Hello, can you guys see this? Yeah. Okay, now it is long. I'm going to go ahead and read it for you guys. 
what I would suggest, okay, what I would suggest is if you got a piece of paper and a pen, or in Google Chat, you wrote down sentences about the main idea. So whenever you hear something that you think is important, you write it down. Okay? You can either do this with a piece of paper and a pen, or you can put it in Google Chat so you can look at it later. Okay? But I will read it, and therefore you can just follow along and listen. Uh, whoever has someone talking in the background, could you please mute your microphone? And Thank you. Okay, so again, get a piece of paper and a pen and write down any time you hear a, uh, a main detail in the story, something that you need to put in your own summary. Okay, remember, um, giving um, the setting or giving uh, details or emotions, that's extraneous. You only need like one or two. The girl was sad, she was cold, things like that. You don't need three sentences to describe how she felt and why. Okay? Alright, so let's try this. Is everybody ready? Yeah. So, okay, here we go. Okay, so, just follow along with me. Yes. Can you make the text bigger? There you go. Okay. So here we go. Please follow along and write down when you hear the main any any details that you think are important. And if you are going to tell a friend or write the story, you need this to make sure that the story was understood. Okay. It was terribly cold and nearly dark on the last evening of the old year, and the snow was falling fast. In the cold and the darkness, a poor little girl with bare head and naked feet roamed through the streets. It is true, she had on a pair of slippers when she left home, but they were not of much use. They were very large, so large indeed, that they had belonged to her mother and the poor little creature had lost them in running across the street to avoid two carriages that were rolling along at a terrible rate. One of the slippers she could not find, and a boy seized upon the other and ran away with it, saying that he could use it as a cradle when he had children of his own. So the little girl went on with her little naked feet, which were quite red and blue with the cold. Okay, I'll stop there. What's the main idea of this paragraph? That's a little girl who... Okay. Yeah. Who uh, yeah, okay. She... Uh, in the old year, uh, under the snow, and she was wearing uh, slippers, and one she lost. And one was stolen from her. Okay. So, so, yeah, yeah. So she has no, she has no shoes on. So it's yeah. we know it's winter time because it's at the end of the old year. So it's winter, okay? And it's a little girl that is cold and she has no shoes on because one she lost and one was stolen. Yeah. Okay? And that's basically the main idea of that paragraph. Okay, let's continue. In an old apron, she carried a number of matches and had a bundle of them in her hands. No one had bought anything of her the whole day, nor had anyone given her even a penny. Shivering with cold and hunger, she crept along. Poor little child, she looked the picture of misery. The snowflakes fell on her long, fair hair, which hung in curls on her shoulders, but she regarded them not. Okay, what's the main idea of this paragraph? Uh, here, no, no one uh, help, uh, help her to buy a new uh, shoes. Mm -hmm. No one's helping her to buy new shoes? Yeah. Okay, well, no one has given her money. Yeah. For the matches. For the matches. For the matches. And where does she keep the matches? In an, in an apron. Now, can we call the apron something else, and can we call the matches something else?
Okay, if not, we can call them like flame sticks. Or we can call them, you know, something else. But if we need them, that's okay. But we just have to rearrange the sentence. And basically, Snow was falling on her beautiful hair, but she did not care because she was cold and hungry and nobody was buying matches from her that day. And so she didn't care about her hair because that was the least of her worries since no one was buying anything from her. And all she had to sell was matches in her apron. Okay, let's continue. Lights were shining from every window, and there was a savory smell of roast goose, for it was New Year's Eve. Yes, she remembered that. In a corner between two houses, one of which projected beyond the other, she sank down and huddled herself together. She had drawn her little feet under her, but she could not keep off the cold, and she dared not go home, for she had sold no matches and could not take home even a penny of money. Her father would certainly beat her. Besides, it was almost as cold at home as her as here, for they had only the roof to cover them, through which the wind howled, although the largest holes had been stopped up with straw and rags. Okay. It was, it was England, and uh, they were very poor, and uh, uh, she didn't want to go home. It was a uh, New Year's Eve, and she could see throughout a window that they were uh, about to have a dinner and. And uh, her father will banish her if, uh, right? Yeah, yeah. Her father would punish her if she came home yeah. with no money. And she was exactly. like, what's the point? There is no point to go home because it's just as cold in the house as it is out here. And she does not want to get beaten, so she stays outside. Yes, and, and she and then, stayed uh, outside and, uh, between two houses and uh, she tried to keep her warm, herself yep. warm, right? Yep, yep, yep. That's right, and she remembered it was New Year's Eve by looking through the someone's window and smelling the New Year's Eve or the the dinner that they were eating, and yes, all of that is very good. And she did not want to go home because she did not make any money for her father, and her father would uh, punish her, and she did not. It was just as cold at home as it was outside, so she decided to stay outside. All right, good. Her little hands were almost frozen with the cold. Ah, perhaps a burning match might be some good if she could draw it from the bundle and strike it against the wall just to warm her fingers. Okay, what about that short paragraph? Uh, she... she could resort. Yeah. She had an idea. Here, here she, feel, she felt uh, cold and uh, she want to uh, burn the match to uh, keep her warm. Okay, yeah. Yeah, Daniel, what, did, what were you saying? Me? Uh, no, uh, Daniel. Daniel. Yeah. What were you saying, Daniel? If, if I... Let, I want to see the... The paragraph. It's right here. Yeah. Well, and what 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 are you asking me? Oh, I, you were talking, and I was just wondering what you were saying. Yeah, but I don't remember. I <laughs> I said something. <laughs> okay, I don't fair enough. It's okay. That's okay. Um. Uh, Okay, so you're right. So she was really cold, and then she remembered that she had matches. And she was like, only if she yeah. could pick one. Ah, uh, she had an and idea. Strike I it. Said, yeah. I said she had yeah, a, she, a good idea. 
Okay, yeah, she had an idea. She's like, I'm so cold. Ah, that's right. And now I remember. I could strike a match. I have matches. And then I could warm my little fingers. All right? So here we go. She drew one out. Scratch. How it sputtered as it burnt. It gave a warm, bright light like a little candle. As she held her hand over it, it was really a wonderful light. It seemed to the little girl that she was sitting by a large oven stove with polished brass feet and a brass ornament. How the fire burned and seemed so beautifully warm that the child stretched out her feet as if to warm them when, lo, the flame of the match went out. The stove vanished, and she had only the remains of the half-burnt match in her hand. So, what happened here? The magic of a simple match. How she, as a child, magnified one simple match. Yeah, she imagined, right? She when she lit that match, she imagined she was somewhere else, and that she was sitting next to a large stove, and it was all beautiful and polished, and she she was so happy to be in that warm glow and that warm memory, but then the 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 match went out, and she and uh, everything, all that that memory and that that feeling went away just like as the fire went away. So the stove vanished just like the warmth and the fire ban vanished as well. Okay. She rubbed it was a prov provisional solution. It was a, a what type of solution? Provisional. Oh, okay, just like uh, not permanent. Not permanent, yeah. Yes. Okay, good, good. Okay, so this gives her an idea. She rubbed another match on the wall, and it burst into a flame. And where its light fell upon the wall, it became as transparent as a veil, and she could see into the room. The table was covered with a snowy white tablecloth, on which stood a splendid dinner service and a steaming roast goose stuffed with apples and dried plums. And what was still more wonderful, the goose jumped down from the dish and waddled across the floor with a knife and fork in its breast to the little girl. Then the match went out and did nothing but the big, damp, cold wall before her. So, let's see here. Uh, Madeline, Madeline, what do you think? Um, hello. Yeah. Um, she was imagining when she liked the match. Yeah. She what was, was she? imagining like a table and dishes and. Yeah, and and what else with the goose? Um, handed her a fork and knife. Yeah, it came alive regardless of it was dead and it looked like food. It was about to be carved, but the, the goose actually came alive and came over to her. Okay? So remember, just keep with the main idea, but again, paraphrase it into your own words. So uh, if you see something that you like, a sentence, so to speak, try to turn it on its head and keep the main idea, but put it in your own words. But that's good. Thank you, Madeline. All right, continuing. She lighted another match, and then she found herself sitting under a beautiful Christmas tree. It was larger and more beautifully decorated than the one which she had seen through the glass door at the rich merchants. Thousands of tapers were burning upon the green branches, and colored pictures like those she had seen in the show windows looked down upon it all. The little one stretched out her hand towards them, and the match went out. Okay, Roberto, what do you think? Um, this time she had a vision about a Christmas tree. Uh, maybe uh, she wished upon uh, having a happier Christmas. Yeah, exactly. So, so each time she burns a match, she imagines she imagines something new, something different, and so when she burns that match and she warms herself for just a little bit, she she is transported to a better place, okay? 
And so she keeps on striking these matches because she wants to get away from the reality of life. She wants to get away from the cold, dark reality of life, and she wants to be where it's warm and with all these good imaginings or memories. All right, let's see what happens. The Christmas lights rose higher and higher till they looked to her like the stars in the sky. Then she saw a star fall, leaving behind it a bright streak of fire. Someone is dying, thought the little girl, for her old grandmother, the one, the only one who had ever loved her and who was now dead, had told her that when a star falls, a soul was going up to God. Okay, so what's happening here? Here, uh, Hasim, what do you think? Uh, here, I, I think um, uh, I can. Can I continue? Yeah, go ahead, Hasim. Yes. Uh, here, when uh, when uh, imagine that uh, a Christmas tree uh, behind uh, or in front here, uh, and. Um, uh, a star from uh, the sky fall behind her and remind her with uh, her grandmother, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, and, and she... told her, yeah, uh, and uh, uh, told her this uh, still come from God. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, you're right. She re um, when she saw a star fall, she remembered yeah. her grandmother, the only person that ever cared about her. Yeah, and, and loved, loved her. Yeah, exactly. And she was like, oh man, somebody is no longer on earth. Someone is now dead or dying because her, she remembered her grandmother's words and anytime a star falls, somebody is going up to the heavens. Okay? Now I'm going to finish all of this, okay, and then we can talk about it. She again rubbed a match on the wall, and the lights shone around her. In the brightness stood her old grandmother, clear and shining, yet mild and loving in her appearance. Grandmother, cried the little one, oh, take me with you. I know you will go away when the match burns out. You will vanish like the warm stove, the roast goose, and the large, glorious Christmas tree. And she made haste to light the whole bundle of matches. For she wished to keep her grandmother there, and the matches glowed with the light that was brighter than the noonday. And her grandmother had never appeared so large or so beautiful. She took the little girl in her arms, and they both flew upwards in brightness and joy far above the earth, where there was neither cold nor hunger nor pain, for they were with God. In the dawn of morning, there lay the poor little one with pale cheeks and a smiling mouth, leaning against the wall. She had been frozen to death on the last evening of the year, and the New Year's sun rose and shone upon a little corpse. The child still sat in the stiffness of death, holding the matches in her hand, one bundle of which was burnt. She tried to warm herself, said some. No one imagined what beautiful things she had seen, nor into what glory she had entered with her grandmother on New Year's Day. The end. Okay, so what happened at the end? Uh, let's see. Uh, Madeline, what do you think? What happened at the end? Um, she kept lighting the matches and she saw her grandma. And actually she was dying. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Then her grandma came to her and flew her to the sky again. Yep, that's very true. And then um, and we realized. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, and then they found her with the burned matches dying there, but they had no idea what she felt or what she seen or what she imagined on the very yeah, that's very true. All all the people know, the passerbys knows is that a little girl has frozen to death. But we, as the readers, we we know what she imagined and what she felt and what she saw. And she would have rather she rather to she wanted to be with her grandmother, the only person that cared for her, and she wanted to go up with her, her grandmother to the heavens. And so that is uh, the short story. So 
Um, when you uh, when you paraphrase this or when you summarize this, you know, you put a little bit of details and you put the main ideas, but it has to come from your own mouth. That's the most important thing about summarizing. Okay, it has to be your own words in your own mouth. Do not take it word for word. Do not plagiarize. Okay, and that's where you get in trouble. And the more and the better you do this, okay, the easier it becomes. So again, when you see some words that you think you need, ask yourself, can I change that word? Can I give it a new feel? So, um, you know, like uh, instead of going, uh, she was going, someone was dying, you could say pass away, someone passed away, or, or things like that. And you guys are creative, you know how to do this. So now, since we did that, I am going to try to load a movie, and we are going to try to watch a five-minute movie, and I want you guys, um, I want you guys to watch it, and then I want you to paraphrase it, phrase it, or summarize it for me. Okay, let me give it a second to load. So, are there any questions, or does anybody want to talk about what they just read? Yes. Uh, uh, sorry, Daniel. No, uh, for ladies first. Right. Uh, the name of the story was Match. It was called the Little Match Seller. The Little, little Match Seller. And it was very much like Dickens' stories, but it was American because of the spelling of words. Who was the author? Uh, let me find out for you. I, I took this off a short story. Uh, let me find but, it. But it's, there's a link of Roberto Mahera at the chat that it has the, the story. Yes, yes. I took it right off the page. Let me make this smaller. Doesn't matter. I'll look it up later. Let's have ah. Daniel's question. Yes. No, no. no it's, it was by Hans Christian Andersen. Anderson. I didn't want to say that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. It's a, it's a very real but and sad story only. Yes. Yes. And, but, it's, and, but it's real. That's the problem. Yeah, yeah. Uh, ben, do you agree with me that it's very much like Dickens' stories? Uh, yes, yes, it's, it's very Dickens. Uh, it was written by Hans Christian Andersen. But it's modern, because, but Dickens is from Thank the you. 19th century, I think. Well, I think Hans Christian Andersen is also from the 19th century. We can look him up really fast while our... But uh, a question. Uh, in Eng yes, go in ahead. Eng in England, now it's poverty and, and they are uh, little child like this of the story or, or it's ancient? Because I'm sorry, here, in say South America, here in South America, we, we think that England and the States, all the walls are all of gold and dollars and... <laughs> no, oh, goodness, that's, no. That's true. That happens. Uh, this where child. people think like that. Yeah, oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, people, people die all the time from, um, from living on the streets. It's very common. Um, if you, you, you should go visit America and see how backwards it actually is. It is no better than Uruguay or Brazil or anything else. It just it has what, you can't believe everything you see in on TV or in movies or in music because we sell you this idea, but that idea is a lie. The American dream, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We want everybody to think that uh, everybody is driving gold cars and living in gold houses, but that is far from the truth. Um, yeah, it's, it's, just, it's just a big made-up thing. The American I, dream is a lie. I, I knew an, an American uh, I don't know, journalist that came to yeah. Uruguay 
and she told me I ironically she says look uh, America is all gold the, the walls are of gold we have <laughs> dollars on the on the walls and well, she was laughing all about because it's our idea yeah um, I imagine she was being ironic <laughs> yeah she was very ironic because she was a, she okay. is a good journalist Okay. Okay. Thank good. You, good. Good. Um, thank you. For, I got for, it. I for got you guys. it. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. Hans Christian Andersen was uh, alive during the 1800s. Okay. It's um, a very nice still story to teach. Yeah. Yeah. I liked it. Uh, I thought it was very because poignant. Cecilia is a teacher, so it's a very nice story to her. Okay. Good. What What did everybody else think? What did you guys think, Sajid? What did you think of the story? Sajid, can you hear me? No? Uh, Roberto, what did you think? Um, it's a sad and tragic story. Uh, tell us about poverty. <laughs> But also about illusions, uh, dreams, hopes, and how she um, she goes uh, she dies peacefully in her own mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I really want to show you this this five minute video, and I should have I I should have been smarter, and I should have downloaded it um, sooner. Um, let's. I have the link for you guys, so if I don't, if it if it's not finished by the time, uh, you can take this link. Okay, so this is the video I want to show you. It's only a five-minute video, and I'm gonna go ahead and start it now, and we'll see if we can get it going. And if not, we'll just talk about it and what we think will happen at the end of it. Okay. Sorry, I'm making it bigger. How do you say that man? He is a homeless man or bum. Homeless. Homeless. Can we say beachcomber? Beachcomber. Yeah. Because he collects things on the beach. Ah, okay. That's all I got so far. <laughs> I can't do any more. Um, so clever. It's so clever. 
Well, it's it's gonna it's gonna change pretty dramatically. I've I've watched it already, and maybe in the next three to five minutes, I can uh, show you more. Um, but what do you think is gonna happen? How do you call these programs that they produce? Uh, fame out of a show. They sh they produce a fame, a film, like a, a short the, film. The singers that they go and sing. Y yes. The singers uh, go they, and sing. They they got a jury, and they they go and sing, and they finally become famous in America. Like a play? They, they or are ordinary. An opera? They, oh, they, like rea reality, reality TV? Shows, yes, yes. It, it's exactly the same. Well, why do you think this is reality? Reality TV? Because they, they, they were famous for a second. In a second, they became famous. They became famous. Okay, okay. So these bums, these these homeless people, do you think they are going to become famous? I don't know. They they were from anonymous to to public. That's why I felt. Ah, okay, because they were we pass them by all the time and we don't pay them any attention. They never have their own no one puts a camera to them. And now yeah. We are, they are the main characters. Yes. They are the most important people. Okay. Yeah, okay. I see what you're saying. Okay, anybody else? No, nothing? What do you think is going to happen? I think you would be surprised what you think is going to happen. Anybody want to make a guess? I want to see it again. It's possible or we don't have time. Well, I can continue it and maybe we can see another 15 seconds. Yeah. So let's see. Okay, what do you think now? Can you guys hear me? Uh, at first, uh, he thinks he's uh, like on a practical joke, maybe. He's cautious, suspicious. Okay, okay. so s someone is playing a practical joke on him, but why? Why? Why would someone play a practical joke on a homeless person? What's the reason for that? So maybe, do you think he is has always been homeless? Do you, no. Do you I think someone think so. is playing a cruel joke? What do you think, Danielle? It had happened in our country. I think that it's he is not a homeless. He's an an active uh, an actor. He's an a detective. I think. So. He's an a, de a detective. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, he's not a homeless, a real homeless. Okay. And you think he is a detective? Yes. All right, Cecilia? I think that he's making an investigation. I didn't catch the end of it. I didn't catch the end. The, the fact of, of the CD and the, as it had no sound to me, I didn't catch the whole piece. Sorry. Okay. Well, what I got so far, what you guys have seen, is that you know people were coming in to put TVs where he was sleeping, and then they turned them on the TVs. He awoke. Then two other homeless people came and started uh, watching TV with him. He did not like their company, and so he basically was angry, kicked them away. Then the somebody called in a. Uh, in a car called the people of the TVs and they switched the cables and now the cables were switched and they played the video of him so now he sees his face and he's like wondering why is somebody watching me then they put a DVD from 1995 into the DVD player and the only shot we get is of a girl let's see if we can get a little bit more information See, because there's him looking at this girl. Ah, that is why it's called mementos. It's his mementos. Ah, yes, it's his moments. And my, my, I don't have it. Okay. Ben. All right, guys. Yes. You, uh, you're gonna have to watch the video on yourself because I don't have the time to show you. But please watch this video. Uh, I think you would really like it. Also. You have the link. Um, go ahead. What's the link? Sure. I put it. I put it in Google Chat. Do you see it? It says B I M E O. Oh, B O. Yeah. Uh, ah, I put yeah. it in Google. Buy me -o. Okay. Buy me -o. Take that. Okay. That's the video link. It's only a uh, seven-minute video, but two minutes are credits, so it's really only five minutes long. Okay. What I want you to do is watch it, watch it, and then try to summarize it. Okay. Try to summarize it. Put it into your own words. Okay. Interesting. Really interesting. Yeah. Yeah, it is. I, I really like it. Um, I wish I would have thought about sooner to have downloaded. That's my fault.